Did, it, did you start with the idea of a father and daughter or with the character of the father? Where did you start? Um, where did the movie begin for you? <clears throat> it was father and daughter from, from, from the beginning on and also the idea of him transforming and in another uh, character um, to meet her new or to meet her as a stranger or to, to start from zero. Um, but with her character, there was more research in, involved. So, uh, and as as her work is is very important for her, and um, um, there was always, yeah, there was a part that I had to work on doing interviews with businesswoman until. Um, so I discovered her character um, a bit more, although I feel close to her. But because of that, I, I had the feeling with the father. Um, yeah, maybe it started a bit more with him, like being this joker, jokester, practical joker, pranks, prank, prankster, prankster, playing pranks. Yeah, prankster. yeah. Prankster is that a word? Sure. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and so, where did the teeth come from? The teeth and the wig. <laughs> the teeth and the wig. Um, Act with the teeth, it's it's um, a bit, not a bit. My my own father did joke with teeth uh, for a while. Um, I was when my I was. My father was a, a dentist. So. Oh, so that yeah, <laughs> it came naturally to you, of course. Yeah. yeah. So um, Peter is like um, he could have made the teeth. Yeah, that yes, was I a big, uh, a funny coincidence that Peter. Is that true? Yeah, he's a, he's a yes, I did what, a lot of them the when I was at the, at the act school. All my colleagues wanted the teeth from, that I make for them, and I did. So, and I read this book, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, I, 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 it's just that little thing. I mean, I, I was at the, at when I was a volunteer at, um, in Munich. When I studied, there was a, a, the German premiere of the first uh, Austin Powers. And and I, I I worked there and as a giveaway they gave us um, uh, the fake teeth, mm -hmm. some fake teeth and I thought my father could really uh, use them, so um, <laughs> I gave it to him and 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 it suited him so well and he really did like these small moments like just putting them in when he wanted to <laughs> say something really serious or yeah and I liked that little moment yeah. So did everybody else, um, <laughs> I, you know. Um, and then <laughs> the dress is just one of the greatest trying to get the zipper. Um, is uh, yeah. <laughs> is that? Shall I tell you something about the dress? No. Yeah. Really? Well, it took a, a, a little bit of time to find it because you had to get into it somehow right. and <laughs> not get out of it anymore. So it was not so easy. But um, still, thank you for the idea with the fog because yeah. I didn't know that. So, now I know, and you know too. So. I didn't have a partner for a while, so... Then she found, she, she found some things. <laughs> I had just had a fork. <laughs> I lived with a fork. fork. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we go to fork. do some questions from the audience? <laughs> hmm. Three parts. One is, um, <laughs> the first is a compliment. Um, the second one is uh, about father and daughter, and yeah, it's specifically. A, it's a bit different than uh, most of the films. Uh, a lot of films are about separation. Yes, and it's so about them coming together. Th yeah, th yeah, what happens after. Yeah. So, uh, the and, then and then the cheese grater, what? Yeah, yeah exactly. right. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, for me, it came very naturally that it's father daughter, so father son would have been a. I know nothing, or I don't know enough about it, so I could make a film, but I think I, yeah, this came very, very naturally. And I was, I saw it more like also a film about family, because the family can sometimes be, or something very static, hard to escape, so everybody achieved a certain role over the year, no matter if he likes it or not, so. Um, it's it's really it's lifelong and, and you cannot change you can change a lot in your life but you cannot change where you come from so 
I had the feeling this was a topic that interested me in general and um, also in the very first draft of the script it was a bit longer the part at home and and um, and so yeah I made it, it it became more focused on 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 the two um, yeah and um, and the cheese grater I think I don't know why but um, we have a lot of cheese graters at home that someone gave us, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, we do too. It's yeah, really my parents, but also the parents of my husband, and um, yeah. And recently there was a, was a fight who gave the best of those because it's very clear there's one cheese grater that's really the best, and we don't know anymore. So I had the feeling it's uh, yeah, it's and it's. There was a fight about the cheese grater? No, oh, not okay. because he oh. said, yeah, but this cheese grater is from my mother. And oh. I said, no, it's from my mother. So it was like, very not very interesting. But yeah, I thought it's a good um, present also because it's annoying. I mean, it's, it's annoying for her and he, the way he gives it to her, he already knows it's a catastrophe. He knows it's, it's not a good present. So, and I have, have that situations with with uh, my parents when they come and give me something and say, just throw it away, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay. But <laughs> so it's like, say, no, I really like it. And so it's strange, yeah. Um, I remember about a year ago, we were in contact. I had asked you, because you had shot the film, and I said, so, hey, um, can we get a look at the film for this year's New York Film Festival? This is a year ago. And you yeah. said, um, I have 700 hours of rushes to get no, through. That's no, that's not No, but something like that. Like a lot of, a lot of yeah. hours of rushes to get through. So I think we're, you know, you'll see me next year. Um, yeah, but, 100. Uh, okay, but still, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of hours of rushes to, to look through. But um, that begs the question, of course, the work that you did with um, Sandra and Peter is, yeah. is uh, I'd, I'd love for you guys to talk about that, how you worked on these scenes in the film. What they the all did on that 100 hours. <laughs> 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 and it was really good. A lot when of you, will, when good you make the, the, the 10 other films of this 100 hours, <laughs> <laughs> you could. I, c I could make a, uh, another, a different film. I, I mean, like, I yeah. could make another conflict. I mean, the film, it's. It's not that there's a, we didn't throw out many things. So it was a written script and we, we followed that script. But like from what happens on the sub level, uh, there are many more possibilities. Like Ines could be more, yeah, and maybe there are variations, maybe not, not so tough or at certain points tougher. So it, it and with him, so we, we yeah. We tried different things, yeah, all the time. And uh, we had a long rehearsing process so that the relationship that we have is not something that is just written and we play father and daughter. We don't know each other at all. So when we started shooting, we were very familiar with each other already. So, and that was good. So we could start from that level and, um, and get on each other's nerves yeah. then. Oh, yeah? And fight. <laughs> we, st we spent a lot of a lot of time for, for um, casting all the characters and uh, this was a, a good uh, possibility to improvise uh, different situations and, um, and uh, Marin, she is really very talented to write scenes. We did not uh, uh, always the scene of the, from the script but she, in the next morning she had two, three new scenes. This it uh, looks like it's easy for you. I never tried to use the, the script in the rehearsing process too much because it's, yeah, it's then you, yeah, it's, it's gone then maybe for the, you have to leave something open for the shooting day. Yeah. So you want people to work from the values that are in the script. And, and especially with the casting, it's complicated. I never take a scene from the script for the casting because, um, so I write different scenes be, be, because the actors prepare that sometimes so much that it's, or, yeah, it's, it's a big risk to use <laughs> something like that. That's the problem. She's not interested in prepared actors. <laughs> actors. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really like the, the lot of material that we have. I learned that it's, it gets more interesting 
Uh, that's maybe it's a dangerous to say, but when you're tired and you like play everything that is possible in that scene, then things happen that you cannot predict from the beginning. So, and then yeah, that's kind of little. You always talked about little gifts that you get from us or from the story or whatever that we couldn't know in the beginning. Yes. So that's why we were doing it over and over again. You're done also. with everything that you've prepared, and then you've, you're open to new things. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a hard work because never you could say, so well done now. Yeah, that, that's a bit the thing because you can have, this is really, I understand, I mean, I'm also as a director, you're longing for this moment where you could say, <laughs> that's it, was really good, so, and we take that take or something. I never, because I really, I have a feeling that I'm satisfied then or that we have everything, but we were, we I don't were, know what's I right. I think, you know, afterwards when you like watch it again or like, I mean, some moments you really... Know yeah. that it was good, but no. But if yeah, if you said something like so, or <laughs> uh huh, or mm hmm, then it was <laughs> then it was not good. No, then it was. The normal was okay. Re reset. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Come in. That's good. Uh, was there ever another title? Because this one is perfect. It's like Mildred Pierce or James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond with the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, now it feels good. The title. No, it, there was never another title. I mean, I during the I did a research also on comedians, and I liked a lot. Um, Andy Kaufman, and he had a um, he had this he had several characters, and he had one character Tony Clifton, which was this very bad bad guy, bar singer, Las Vegas, very over the top, and and it was a big contrast to him. Like I mean, with him, nobody really knew who, who he really yes. was. I mean, he even said himself was the, just the real me, or no? Or then he said ah, it's too complicated, but. Um, and um, so that's a bit where the Tony, yeah, because I like that so much. I named Tony, and I think it's an international and also international name. And then you have that German Erdmann, which is like a downer. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's like, yeah, <laughs> I found but it. But also so the Erdmann comes from Erdmännchen, you know, the, the animals. What's, what's there was a scene, I remember that's not in the film, when... Yeah, we are talking said, about like uh, the brother has an Erdmännchen too. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what Erdmännchen is? No. It's an animal, an Erdmännchen. These, these ah, are yeah, like okay. oh, meerkat. Thank you. Oh. Meerkat. So. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Meerkat. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Wait for the mic. It's on its way. It's coming. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, just uh, two very quick things, um, both dealing with aspects of the musical choices in this film. Uh, first, Ms. Huller, um, I've been a fan of your work ever since Requiem. Uh, Thank you. One of the most amazing performances I've ever seen. And in this film, yes, absolutely. And in this film, what you do with the greatest love of all, I've, that is an amazing incarnation. Like that, you, you get the feeling and it builds beautifully and it, it it accesses something, and it was just an absolutely transcendent sequence, and I just wanted to thank you for that, because that was incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, the, the, my other question is, uh, what led you to choose a, a plain song for the end credits? Because that's, that's, such, a, that's such a very specific uh. tone, and it works perfectly with everything that's come before. And I was just like, any, anytime you hear that song in a film, it's it's a it, it's reflective of great thought that went into it, and I just wanted to ask. It what works in every film, yeah, I think so too. Um, act, I, 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 I wo it's, was, it's always complicated when you don't use use music through the whole film. Then finding this song at at the end that that suits because it means so much and and so on and and um, I thought it should be something that refers to Ines, like when she was a teenager or something, and it was also something that I was listening listening to. And actually with that song, I, I always, 
when I was shooting the film before, um, I just had a, a CD in the car with four, five songs on, and I was always driving the actors home from the shooting of Alle Anna and always put that song on, and they were got on my nerves and I said, yeah, the film should be as big as this song, but I don't think we can use it in the end. It's, 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 ju it's a bit an, was heißt an angeben? Um, an oh. I think it has like, Pretentious. yeah, it was, it's very big, you know, felt like, oh, this, this song is so monumental that I, that, I, that, that I didn't know. And actually I never expected that. I just put it there and said, yeah, let's try this song because that's the only song that I, I would like to hear at the end and then it suited. And yeah. Um, hello. When I grew up, there was a joke that said the two shortest books in the world are the British cookbook and the German book of humor. Yet all of you are so funny. Is that a recent achievement in Germany? Or uh, do you think Germany was funny from the beginning? <laughs> well, the, the funniest thing is Germans ask that too. So we really Everybody don't... Everybody thinks that of other nations. Yeah, probably. That they're not funny? Sort that of. they are not funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, we never had the feeling that we're doing a comedy, first of all, if I may answer that. Yeah. Uh, Maren always told us it's, it's a film about humor, so it's not a funny film. So we were playing a tragedy mostly, but the people are so desperate <laughs> that they become funny, but none of us wanted to be. But, well, Tony wanted, but uh, Ines definitely didn't want to be funny. Mm -hmm. Never. So... I don't know, we, it's not, yeah, it's not, I don't know. Yeah, for me it's, that was the good thing for me that, that um, because my two films before were very realistic and, um, and with this Tony I, I found a way a bit out of that realism in a way mm -hmm. and, and I could let other things happen and, and, but also I was interested in that genre like doing a comedy, so this was something that I had in mind, but I knew that I could never make a comedy like in, in terms of that I have a, that I do it to please an audience, me mm -hmm. as an author. So uh, there, it was good that I had Winfried who's playing a comedy for her out of desperation, you know? Yes. So, and and that was something, something different and um, and um, yeah, I think, and also with the actors, I, I really try to avoid that we think too much um, of being funny in the end or like how funny it will be in the end. I thought mm -hmm. if it's not funny, then it's simply a drama, who cares? So, yes, yeah. and uh, what is a comedy? It's a, a question of a definition because uh, uh, Chekhov, all his uh, plays are comedies. Mm -hmm. Even Cherry Orchard, he yeah. calls a comedy. Yeah. So, Uncle Vanya is, uh, 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 Uncle Vanya is also, uh, it is a comedy, but mm -hmm. it's... But it's not designed as a laugh machine. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the answer is Germans aren't funny, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We are not, yeah. you're right. After all. <laughs> Hi, I wanted to ask about this kind of uh, international business world that it takes place in, where everyone speaks a sort of like pared down, um, almost sterile version of English, and they're kind of has its own norms. And I'm wondering how you became attracted to this kind of subculture at first, and uh, how you researched it and engaged nice. with it. Yeah. <laughs> What was the second part of your question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, like how you researched it and engaged with it, and yeah. if you learned anything specific that changed your thoughts about it, or if your initial suspicions were confirmed. That's interesting, because it does feel like a subculture in the movie, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, I, 
I really, I was interested like what the uh, what the others of my generation are doing, like that are politically more far away from from what I do, and 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 I also had the feeling it's. It's interesting to research something because I didn't do it with the last film, so I was um, I thought I should at least learn something when I take so long to make a film, and um, so um, but and I met a lot of women, especially but also men, like doing different things in in economy business, and um, and it was interesting because in the beginning I was like. Make this, made these interviews trying to ask very critical questions um, and but like with every enemy when you come closer you you start to and you start to understand um, the picture dissolves in a way and, I, and but I found this 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 job like I mean there were other options that I could have choose she could have also been manager I met interesting women um, building up companies and but with this consultant consultancy thing I found it interesting because it's the the world economy doesn't work without consultancy companies anymore because they they cannot do everything in-house they need to hire people but it's also an, an, an outsourcing of responsibility and um, so it becomes more complicated who to blame for what in the end and and so this is something that I found typical in, in general also maybe for our generation that it's, yeah, that it became so complicated that everybody could like uh, withdraw himself very easily from that and, um, and also that this strong performance aspect um, because I was interested in, have, in Ines being a character who like loses himself between all the roles she plays and having this very strong facade that falls apart more and more. On, and on the contrary, he starts to find himself through a strange performance. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, beside the idea of a father and a daughter, how much you thought about the idea of a, a beauty and a beast, like the a uh, big hairy man versus a very serious, uh, successful businesswoman that keep this attraction all over the film. Like we we follow these this couple all the film, and always this contrast uh, engages us all the film. How much did you think about this contrast between these two persons? Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Father and daughter. Who's Beauty? the Beast? Who's the Beauty? Who is where's the Beast? Yeah, Where the, where with the with the, the with the kooka in the end, like with the furry monster. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I was more thinking of 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 this thing, or I wanted to find something that is more like the inside of Winfried, or that he found him with yeah. that costume. That it's like, I was, it was a big luck to find this thing because it was really it's really an impressive thing, and it's. Almost exactly like they, they they have it. It's from Bulgaria, and um, we didn't put the, there are big bells on it, like very very heavy bells, and we didn't <laughs> we didn't use them. <laughs> but um, yeah, Beauty and the Beast was not. It it was more that I wanted him to be this yeah this this father that he once was, and that she becomes small in his arms again. Yeah. I also think, to me, it's a bit different still that the, the, the bigger the camouflage is that the father is using, the closer they can get to each other, which is a strange thing, but uh, it worked like that. She would never have hugged him, probably, when he was just himself, maybe, I don't know, but they needed this thing to, to get close, in a way. No? I think so. It's easier, yeah? Yeah. And there's a surprise for also for... The father, it's wonderful to yeah. have such a four, what is this? Uh, fur. Furry, fur. fur. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and the more camouflaged it's he smooth is. smooth and, 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 and it's warm and it's... Yes. And it stings, oh my God. And oh. <laughs> yes, Ooh. it does, but uh, you can, that's good. If you would smell, it's, it it's, would... It's out of gold, <laughs> made different. out of real gold and, and it was, it's really incredible. <laughs> How it smells. 
but also when he's camouflaged and, 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 and costumed and then you're not. And so that's, you're completely exposed and uh, that, that's yes. the... Yes, yes, in, in, in contrary, she is less than, she has a, a, a shirt or something yes. like that. A bathrobe. A bathrobe. Yeah. 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 So maybe we'll have time to do, yeah, Jim. I'm sitting here thinking really hard about what I feel about your film. And, so the que and, and that's a compliment. Um, but what I want to ask you is, generationally, with the Merkel mir miracle of Germany, how this film positions itself in a contemporary culture that is global and capital. And in the 30s, screwball comedies in the US during the Depression were a relief a, a way of not dealing with some of the reality of the, the world outside. Um, and I just wondered what your thoughts are about how this is to affect your viewer. Um, I, don't, I don't think so much about the, the viewer in the end or like about the e effect that the film will, will have because like Mm, it's it's more that I really try to come as close as possible to the characters and like to 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 find um, um, yeah to find what um, to find what hurts them the most or like also I, I was often asked like what where this awkwardness comes from that you feel sometimes or why why or whether I in, intend that that feeling but. I think um, I'm, I'm interested in, in, also in terms of comedy, I found out that, that it's so often about status between people, about hierarchies. Immediately when people are in, in a room, there's, they arrange themselves in, in that way and it's often about status switches between people who are painful or who, who where little dramas happen in everyday life and um, and uh, that's something that, um, yeah, that I'm interested in. It's interesting with screwball comedy because, in fact, the dynamic in the movie is, is pretty close to the dynamic in, for instance, the Philadelphia story where Cary Grant is using his own annoying yeah. you know, presence to shock Catherine Hepburn back into self-awareness. Ah, yeah, yeah. But here that's it's true. father and daughter. It's quite unusual. It's a bit slow for Screwball, but I watched Screwball's yeah. comedies mm -hmm. <laughs> also. Bringing up baby, I was really fascinated again how, mm -hmm. how, how good that is. It's so, such a joy. Yeah. Yep. One more. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, struck with the, the two scenes where, the, where uh, Ines couldn't get out of her dress and then where the father couldn't get their head off. And I was wondering if that was them coming out of their characters. Like, in other words, once she got out of the fancy, fancy dress, she was the child again. And, and the father maybe didn't want to get the hat off because he loved being the father. And I'm just wondering if there's any relationship between those two scenes. It's because he didn't have a fork, right? <laughs> he couldn't use it. He didn't have a fork. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> um, no, it was the, both was um, in 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 the script. Um, I remember that you thought we sued you into the dress that we changed something. The moment we used was a moment when you later asked, um, "Did you change something?" Or because you really didn't. I really didn't, didn't get out. Didn't yeah. get out, yeah. <laughs> and with the hat, it was really it's so because. Um, this costume, you carry it on the on the chin. That's also why it it has that emotion or is so lively because you have every movement from the neck. It's also like with a like with animated characters. It's also like here a lot of emotion comes comes from because usually uh, it, if it's on the shoulders, it's a, it's a stiff thing and and um, because of that you go into a um, into a thing that is so close on your on your face that you almost really never get the head off. And um, I put that into the script because it's really complicated to get that thing 
get out of that thing. And I, I like the idea that, that she's, I mean, they find each other th through this hug, but on the other side, she still doesn't realize what's going on with him, that he maybe could die in, in, in that thing. So, and that's something maybe I found typical for uh, parents and children, that the children, they don't think about like how much, sometimes how much effort it is to be a parent or to like do something for the kids. I mean, so or, or at the moment, I don't, or like, um, yeah, how much it, it costs to do, yeah, to be a parent, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you.